All right, Rippers, we're here for another video. I hope you're ready for some fun. Now, I asked you in the last video what you thought this next video would be on, right? And some of you, or at least one of you for sure, Bonnie, just saying, got it right that it was about another rifle build. But it's not so much of a build because I already showed you what we're going to put on it, and it's very simple. And that's why I wanted to show this video. This is a very simple rifle, something I think is overlooked quite a bit out there in the preparedness community. And the reason I think it's overlooked is because it's, well, it's dated a little bit. Now they've updated it a little bit and that's what I'm gonna show you, which I think is really cool. Um, but I, I think it's very relevant still to this day. And that would be the lever action rifle. And why I think it is still valid is, it's handy, it's light, well, fairly light, um, but it's it's lighter weight, skinny, easy to carry, very durable. Like that's something, I mean, there's a reason the Cowboys had them and threw them into a scabbard. Well, well it's probably because that's all they had. Well, besides other things like sharps and stuff like that, but that's just another story. But it was a handy rifle. It was nice, thin, compact, fit in there, held high capacity for its day, right? Uh, I believe this one is eight plus one. I'm gonna show you in a minute. Um, and it came in a variety of calibers, especially today. I mean, you can get lever action rifles by multiple different manufacturers. You can get it, you can get it by Henry. Uh, uh, you can get it by Marlin. You can get it by Winchester. Uh, I think you now can get it from Smith & Wesson has just come out with one. And if there's any I'm missing, put them down in the comment section, please. I want people to have a variety. Now, the one I chose, one, because it was a good deal. You know me, I'm always a bargain shopper, especially in today's prices. Um, and so if I can find a good deal on something and it's something on my list that I want to add to our videos and the collection would be uh, a reason I'd got it. But it's also one of the ones I think makes the best in this case because it has been around for a while and it offers the most bang for the buck, right? There's a lot of features that some of the other ones don't have, which I think is really pretty neat. Um, so let's get to it. I'll show you. Now, what I got... Oh, wait, before I did, I just faked you out. You can also get these in a lot of calibers. I mean, you can get them in 30... I mean, if you want to go with the old ones, which are going to cost you a pretty penny, the antiques, you can get them in like the 32, 40s or what... All those old calibers, you guys know them. Put them down in the comment section so people know. I can't remember them all, but you can get them in 38, 357, 44 Magnum, uh, 410 shotgun, right? Which will shoot... Which, they can also get them in 410 or in 45 Long Colt, which is another cool one. That's one that hopefully maybe one of these days I'll get in one of those little Golden Boys or something like that, right? Just so you can have that Western feel. Or they make a Silver Boy now too. That's pretty cool. Um, although it's not made out of silver, you know, just saying. But it's a nice, pretty chrome. Uh, but they also make them in, uh, you know. Uh, Great hunting caliber, especially for a bush gun like the 30 out six or no, the 30 30 Winchester, right? Um, and then they make it in the caliber that I wanted, and that's the 4570. And why is that? Well, because it's a big old bullet, and who doesn't like throwing a big old chunk of lead? You can get them up to 405 uh grain bullets, man, moving at like 1600 feet per second. That's gonna sting just a little bit. Meant for big game, you know, like elk and bear and and buffalo and things like that. In fact, the 4570 was very big in buffalo hunting, like as was the 45100. And boy, wouldn't you love to see a 45100 in a lever gun? Now, I don't know if they ever made one, but if they did, I sure wish one of these companies would come out with one because who doesn't want more power behind bigger lead, right? I know I do. So that being said, I got this little guy right here. And the reason I got it, I hope you guys can see it in frame there. I'll kick back here a little bit. This, now, even though you see bullets here, don't let that scare you because there's none in here, right? But the reason I got this is because this is the Henry, right? Yeah, Henry, which I think is it's been around forever, built a great 
lever action at a great price, right? Now you can see it has a little bit of an enlarge. It doesn't have the big ring, right? Cause I'm not planning on flipping this thing around and giving myself a black eye or a bloody nose or anything like that, you know, or new scars, that kind of thing. Uh, believe it or not, I have scars right there, right there under my eye. Would you believe I got a metal plate right there? <laughs> That's a story for another time. But, and I'll share it, don't worry. But I like this rifle, one, because it's smooth. I like that it has a hammer, no other safeties. If the hammer's back, don't pull the trigger, right? And that I love. It doesn't have to have a grip safety, right? So you don't have to grip down on it to fire. That allows you to fire a little quicker. Although I don't know if you'd want to fire 4570 quick because, I mean, there you go. 405, I mean, that bullet goes all the way down to that line right there. And then the rest of it is pretty much powder. It don't shake much. So that right there, that's a big boy right there. So we got this 4570. Now, what you'll see is you'll notice they've updated it. It's got all polymer uh, furniture on it, which is good for all weather. Excuse me, for all weather. Um, I like the matte finish on it. Be nice and durable finish. Um, I like the fact that it has a high-vis sight. You can see that right up there, a high-vis sight on the front. That's nice. And then you've got your regular kind of a regular buckhorn style. It has high-vis red inserts in there. So in the sunlight, this is really gonna show up really well or in low light conditions where there's just some light. Now, the only thing I'd say I don't like about this site, it, it's windage driftable or you can move it back and forth. There's a set screw on there. So you'd be able to get this thing sighted in real good. And it has that green high-vis front sight. But what I don't like about this is it's a plenty durable sight, blade sight. But in order to raise elevation, you have to turn this screw in and raise elevation. So you're kind of forced to pick a range that you want to zero it at. Now, I would recommend zeroing it at 100 yards on a rifle like this because that will allow you to reach out to 300 yards. But there's going to be quite a bit of dropout at 300 yards, somewhere around 56 inches, if I remember right, depending on the weight bullet you're shooting, right? Because lighter bullets won't have as much drop. That being said, I prefer the, the style sights where something graduates it and has hash marks on it so that you can turn it up so that I don't have to hold over. I can sight it in at 100 and the rest of it should be calibrated so that I can just move it to the 200 mark and the 300 mark. Now, I don't know if I've ever seen that on rifles like this. I think I've seen the one where there's a blade with notches. You know, there's a blade in the center here and it has notches that you can just pull up, push back. That would be 200 to the first notch. Pull up, raise it up, push it back to the 300 mark. Now, this is pretty much a 300-yard gun. Now, I know there's going to be a lot of you that are going to be out there, oh, man, they used to shoot those things out, like the, especially the 45-100, out to 1,000 yards, and that's true. But when they did that, they mounted back here usually, well, either they mounted a scope or they mounted back here a peep sight that you could move up and down that is calibrated. Now, I might think about doing that uh, in the future is, is mounting a nice peep sight back here uh, to do that with. Um, because I like the idea of being able just to di dial it in at one range and then be able to quickly move it to the others. Because this ultimately is a 300 yard gun that will still hit very hard out at 300 yards. So I'm not sure, we'll, we'll, we'll try it out at the range, see how we like this, but I don't like the idea of being set at 100 and having to hold over at 200 and 300, right? Um, but it can be done, I've done it many times. Uh, that being said, I do think the sight's pretty okay. Um, it looks like it's all metal, so that's good. And it has, you know, has serrations on the backside right here so that it blocks the sun glare. Uh, from the site. Now you'll notice up here, right? Let's see, make sure you see it. Up here, we've got these notches in here and that's not for venting steam or anything. That, although it, it probably makes a lot of steam or powder or smoke, that kind of thing. But this is for, these are M-lock rails so that you can mount things on there. And you'll notice that I've got this little light laser mounted on there. Now it's an old school style because I picked it up for real cheap, like I said in the last video. Uh, and it's just like new, uh, and it just clips on to, see, you can see here, they've got a pick rail on the bottom. So all you got to do is just put that on there and then tighten it down. Now we'll talk more about that site in just a minute, 
but I really like the idea of having that. I think all firearms should have a light and some sort of laser for close in uh, situations where you're not able to maybe aim quite as much because you don't want to say, uh, expose yourself from cover as much, right? And I'm not saying this is a CQB gun or anything like that, but I think it's nice to have that option. I also like how it you can turn it off. So you don't have to have the laser on, which will tell people where you're at, right? But I like the idea of having a light on every gun because this is definitely a gun that a light would be good for, kind of like along the lines of a shotgun, right? So that being said, uh, I also like having some sort of shell holder on here that you can access shells quickly. Uh, so these cheap, literally cheap, I got this even at Sportsman's, right? So you imagine they marked it up, but it was a $2.99 sleeve on there. Now I put a couple zip ties in it that run through one of the shell holes and index here where the little notch for your uh, bevel is here. Now the only difference is, is I didn't just poke a hole because Marlin or Henry, excuse me, not Marlin, Henry actually notched this in and their back uh, hole for this is built into the stock. It's not a swivel. And I kind of like that because if you've ever had the swivel type, they always come a little bit loose, right? Sometimes. So that being said, I like the fact that it's built in there and it's notched up and in, but it was harder to get this sock around. So I actually had to trim a hole and then burn it with a, with a lighter to keep it from fraying out, right? Cause we want it to last. And then, uh, in order to get it to go on because it with the material it made it too thick and it wouldn't poke past the material like your standard like most companies just screw them into the stock and let them stick out this kind of holds it all in nice and tight and i thought that was kind of nice a nice touch but you have to go through a little bit more to mount one of these shell holders on here now what i'll tell you about these shell holders is don't leave your firearm stored with your shells in it okay and the reason i say that is is because the shell holders over time, they can get kind of old and they lose their spring, right? So to keep them from doing that, store them in a good temperature controlled environment, which you should be with your firearms, but take the shells out and have them in a box right beside so that you can load them back up again um, when you're getting ready to go out and use this rifle, right? Because you don't want these to start fitting loosely and your shells to start falling out, right? So, but it's the reason I have it on there is I like how it's nice that you can take, and that's the other thing about this rifle, is they actually included the side gate. Now, if you'll notice, some of the rifles out there come with side gates and some don't. The ones that usually do come with side gates tend to sometimes delete the loading tube option up here. And I like the idea that you have two options to load this because the, the loading gate is meant to quickly throw one in or top yourself off quickly. You just put it in, push it in there. I'm not gonna do it because I don't wanna have a hot gun in here, but that you can load in through the, through the loading gate. And I think that that's an option that you, you should have, right? I don't like the ones that don't have a loading gate and only load through here, but if it's what you can afford, you go ahead and do that if you find a good deal, right? Because a deal is a deal. Um, I don't know what else you would mount to this. That's why I'm not going to probably put any more rails to it because a light and a laser is pretty much all you need. If you have a suggestion, put it down in the suggestion section. Tell me also what you think I think I should do. Should I get a, a LPVO for this, right? Maybe even just a little primary arms, you know, get a rail for here and a, and a primary arms LPVO on there. Or should I just mount a tang sight on here and keep it kind of traditional, or not a tang, but a peep sight back here? that's elevated uh, so that it's more like a traditional uh, uh, style gun, right? And they fold down too, so I can still use this one at 100 and then fold that one up if I want to go further, right? And I think that might be the option I'm going to go. Now, I was going to put a wrap around this, but honestly, it's smooth enough that it's not really hard on the hand. Plus, when you start wrapping this up, you start adding thickness to it. And now you basically have one that isn't enlarged. And the reason for this enlargement is, is if you got to use this with gloves on, if you're out in the cold weather, right? And to me, it's more important to have the ability to get my hand in there with gloves on <laughs> than not, because I'd probably be using this rifle for, you know, close in bushy type uh, hunting or, or situations where I'm, you know, it's real thick 
and uh, you know, but I want still a lot of stopping power, right? Because what I might be hunting, bear, elk, whatever, might be close. Now this isn't my elk hunting rifle, but I might try it because it adds more of a challenge. Because when you go with iron sights and a big bore like this, well, you gotta get closer, right? Which means you really gotta think about your shot and you gotta get out there and practice. Okay, so that being said, let's go to the, let's go to here. You can also see that I put a sling on there. And my opinion on the sling is it doesn't have to be expensive. This is just a cheap Allen sling. It'll hold up for long enough. It has shell holders on it too. Don't leave your shells in there also. But it has shell holders on it too. It clipped up to there. And as you can see how they recessed that holder up there in the front as well. See how that's recessed in there? But they had a really good clamp on it. It wasn't expensive. Uh, it's padded. This is all just neoprene, which I like. That makes it nice and comfortable, right? And I'm going to have to see how I like it with that light on there to see if it interferes with that too much. But quite honestly, unless it's nighttime, I'll probably just take that off while I'm hunting and have this in my pocket where I can clip it back on, right? It'll hold zero at short ranges close enough, right? And that's another reason too. If you're getting charged by a bear or something like that and it surprises you and you can't quite... And trust me, it can happen. You can get charged. I have a buddy who got tore up by a grizzly uh, and he was a orthopedic surgeon. He's retired now, but the story was horrific. And yes, it's out there on the internet, interviews with it. Steve Swarsley was his name. Go check it out. He is a great guy, good friend, and a good surgeon. He's patched me up quite a few times, replaced tendons, fixed ankles, things like that. Uh, and uh, he, well, they got him a trophy for second place. Would you believe his nurses? just cracks me up but he almost lost his life it really did tear him up pretty good it's pretty gruesome i'll let you find the story and if you don't let me know in the comment section and i'll tell you the story someday but uh those things can mess you up in a hurry and he had a, they were bow hunting and for elk and he got they got between uh mama bear and her cubs without even realizing it and she just stood up and they had no idea she was there and he didn't even have time to get to his firearm. He had a 45 uh, 1911 on him, and he couldn't even he couldn't even initially get his hand on the pistol to start with. And even when he did get it on his hand, she had total control of him and was throwing him around like a rag doll. So that's the short story. Um, so don't always think you're going to be able to get the perfect shot or the perfect situation. If you're dealing with bear or things like that, they can sneak up on you. And sometimes just having that dot, and I'd advise getting a green one so you can see it at the daytime, uh, like this one is. That's another reason why I got it, uh, is uh, so you can just pull up and shoot, right? So that being said, uh, the last thing, I'll go, or a couple of last things I'll go over with you. This one retained the loading tube. So you can pull it up and pull this out like the old school style, like 22s and things like that have this. You can drop your shells into the loading tube and then put this back down. That's just another way to load it. And that's how you'd load it up when you have time to do it. You're not in a rush. You're not trying to top off. So I like that it has both options, right? For instance, what if this gate malfunctioned and that was the only option you have because a lot of these companies got away from the tubes and just put a gate in it. And to me, Two is always better than one, right? Now, the last thing I'll talk to you guys about on this, well, second to the last, is you'll notice it's got a threaded barrel on there. And that's the one thing I don't have yet, but I'm, I got it on order, is you got this thread protector on here that comes off. And just in case you're wondering, don't get the 5 8 by 32. That's the wrong thread. It's the 5 8 by... 24 I believe double check it but it's the 5 8 by 24 so I have them actually gonna uh, ask in uh, silencer co which I think they'll have no problem with because they're a great company great customer service I think they'll switch me out for the right thread pitch uh, so I'm sending that off to them to get that switched and when I do I'll be able to put I'm getting one of those ASR uh, quick uh, deta uh, quick deta attach um, suppressor muzzle brakes on the end because that way if I don't want to shoot suppressed I can have the muzzle brake on there and reduce the recoil of this beast and we're going to get out there and we'll do some shooting with and without and you can tell me which looks like it hurts worse uh or less 
And uh, it also, too, with a suppressor on there, will take some of that sound away from there. And I got just the perfect can coming. Got the Silencer Co. Uh, Hybrid 46M, which means I can make it a short can if I want or a long can if I want. It'll do all the way up to 458 wind mag, which is even bigger than this, in a bolt action. However, it's perfect for this. And with some of those rounds, you can get some slower rounds with it so you won't have so much of a crack from the shot of the gun. So you may even be able to shoot some rounds without hearing protection. However, anything you can do to protect your hearing out there uh, is always a good thing. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk to you about is this little guy here, right? Now, it comes with this little sticker that goes on there and it, you see this red sticker that never sticks and always falls off, right? If you can read what that says, it says, oops, see how it doesn't stick? You must use a key and then hand tighten using a coin only. That's pretty smart that the screw on there that does your final tightening fits a quarter just right or a nickel just right or any kind of coin really, but a quarter works well. Everybody has some change in their pocket, even though they're trying to do away with change from us, so we might not, but keep a coin handy with you when you're out there hunting, right? to tighten things down like that. I think that's pretty smart. It also has a couple tabs on there so you can tighten it down with a, with a um, what do you call it? A Leatherman or something like, something like that. But what it means by a key, because I thought it eventually, it meant that a key for tightening, although it said a coin for tightening, is this little notch right in there. You see that? They send you a bunch of what they call keys that help adjust how this fits on here and how this, because this is mainly meant for a handgun sight, so you can bring it closer or further away from your uh, um, trigger guard, right? Now, and they call them keys, and it says you must use a key, because without the key, under recoil, especially this one, is probably gonna slide back. And we're also gonna test this to see if it holds up to the recoil of the 4570, and that laser stays on zero and the light keeps working, right? So, which I'm, I'm pretty sure it will because I use this, I've used these on 308s and 223s, all kinds of other rifles. I like the compactness of them uh, instead of a great big long flashlight on the end. Uh, and, uh, you know, they offer a lot in a small package. So I've always had no trouble with them, even on shotguns, and uh, they work great. So this is the TLR4, that's the old model. Uh, has a light and a green laser on it works really well. So that being said and you can clip it back on there And that key locks into those slots Then you can take and tighten it down with your quarter This usually takes a couple turns here There we go. Don't over muscle anything right don't have to do that and that is the 4570 Henry lever action uh, just a great, great gun. I can't wait to get out to the range and share it with you guys. I'm not sure if my shoulder's ready, but I'm certainly ready to go out there and do it with it. And I hope you enjoy it. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And don't put away, don't, don't think that a, 40, a lever gun of any type, any caliber, isn't relevant today, right? They're quick to shoot. They're accurate. They're handy. And quite honestly, I would not want to get hit with something like this. Even wearing body armor, this is going to put you down. It may not kill you, but it's certainly going to take you out of the fight. So that being said, until next time, stay safe, be secure, always be aware of your surroundings, right? And be getting ready and prepared for anything that may come your way. Adios and aloha.